What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. Tonight I'm going to be giving you the five best sports cars to own, in my opinion, the affordable sports cars for the average person that's coming up in this video. So stay tuned. So the five best sports cars to own, in my opinion, as the next car. You know, this is in a theory what you'd get after your first car, you've got a couple of years no claims bonus. You know, the UK has quite high insurance prices, so I'm, I'm factoring that particular aspect in. And these cars as well are available both new and used, but you're gonna have a, an option of an older car and a newer version of the car. So they're attainable for all price points, if you like. And they're all gonna have very good aftermarket support for modifications, personalization, that sort of stuff. So I've based it on low cost affordability, attainable prices and hopefully these five cars will fit those brackets and you'll find something that you personally like in this list. So number one, the first pick for me would be the Suzuki Swift Sport. Now the old models are becoming very much a go-to car if you like for um, Nürburgring taxis. They're becoming a go-to car over in Japan as well as a bit of a uh, you know fun weekend car, a, a drive to the track and back sort of car and they're so cheap as well to maintain. Um, parts are readily available. Um, they've, they've used quite a lot of the same like suspension components and chassis parts and things like that across various models so I'd have to say the Swift Sport. Now the old Suzuki Swift Sport you can pick them up for about two or three grand. The new Suzuki Swift Sport which is a turbo model, 1.4 turbo is very tunable. You can get you know upwards of 180, 190 horsepower out of them if you change the turbo especially you can reach horsepower figures over 200 horsepower and the cars weigh very very little. Super fun, super affordable, easily modifiable, very cheap insurance you know for what they are and and just a really cool little car. So that's my number one pick is the Suzuki Swift Sport. These by the way are in no particular order, they're just five cars, number one Suzuki Swift Sport. The next pick then would have to be the Honda Civic Type R. Now I know I'm a bit biased, I'm a Honda guy, but hear me out. The Honda Civic Type R, regardless of what particular era of Type R that you get, whether it's the EK9, although not very affordable anymore, the EP3 and the FN2, more so affordable, um, or the brand new Civic Type R, all models are very, very tunable, all very, very capable cars and very, very reliable. The Suzuki Swift Sport as well is reliable, but I'd have to say as far as tunability and keeping something reliable with high horsepower figures, you know, up to 400, even above I've seen dyno figures of over 500 horsepower on a stock engine. So you've got plenty of scope to play with if you wanted to go nuts on the modifications. The good chassis, you know, they handle well, they're very driver friendly if you like, and very fun cars as well. So number two would have to be the Honda Civic Type R. You can pick a decent EP3 up for about three, four grand. Um, FN2s are, are coming that way as well. If you're looking for a really clean, really tidy example of an EP3 though, you're probably looking at six, maybe seven grand. Whereas the new ones, the turbo models coming down in value, you're talking about 20 grand, maybe just under for the FK2. Um, but yeah, second pick, Honda Civic Type R. Number three then would have to be the MX-5, the Mazda MX-5, where we're looking at new or old models. As long as you get one that's not rusty, you know that's not rusted out and just absolute trash and he's put in the bin <laughs> shout out left foot ash those particular cars very very fun very tunable very capable chassis as well front engine rear wheel drive so unlike the other two you've got the option here as well to do skids unless you get some uh, some mcdonald's you know food trays and whack them under the back wheels and stick the handbrake on but you can do skids and yeah very capable chassis now the new mx5 again following in the lightweight i think a lot of manufacturers now are really honing in and really focusing on the lightweight chassis the mx5 really focuses on the lightweight aspect specifically the new model um just like the original na um 1989 through to 95 i think it was i think the new one started in 96 or is it 96 97 either way the 1.5 in the mark 4 mx5 is just as light as the 1.6 in the mark 1 mx5 so to, to meet crash testing regulations and all the rest of it and to be as safe as what new cars are and still be that light really really good you know chassis design and the structural rigidity is very good just a really really cool car and the out they outperform in standard form 
the next pick on this list. But yeah, the MX-5 is definitely pick number three for me. Again, very tunable, very affordable, depending on what year you get. Um, just watch out for rust on the earlier models. Number number four then, <laughs> can't count. Number four would have to be the GT86 and BRZ. Now this is, is personally one of my favorite cars just because the looks are cool, very capable chassis again, just like the MX-5. Rear wheel drive, so you've got the option there to do skids. Really good chassis as far as time attacks concerned. You know, they do very well on tow gear, hot version. Um, they do well at uh, Succuba Circuit. Um, they do some really good lap times at Succuba Circuit with very minimal modifications. The engine's a iffy subject with the valve train recall, but if you make sure that's been done, you know, the, the valve springs have been replaced for the newer versions and it's been done properly, you know, they've put a, a few miles on since the, uh, the recall's been done, then you shouldn't have any issues. You know, they are a very reliable engine. The FA20 engine that they put in that particular car is more reliable than the EJ25 that you see in the uh, more recent um, WRX and STI impressors. So I dare say that it's uh, it's one of those cars, in, in my opinion at least, it won't hold as much power as an EJ25, but as far as like head gaskets failing and, and things like that, and them having hot spots in the engine, which you know the EJ25 is quite notorious for, um, the FA20 is just a better design as far as cylinder head cooling and that sort of stuff, which makes it more reliable and more of a um, more of a bulletproof car in NA form, in naturally aspirated form um, for track days and abuse. So yeah, that would be my personal pick out of the five that I'm giving you but um, I do like the Suzuki Swift Sport, I do like the Civic Type R, I do like the MX-5 and I do like the next car which is the fifth pick on this particular list and that's the Subaru WRX. Now the Impreza WRX is by far one of the best all-around cars you know you've got four-wheel drive very capable in all weathers and all situations for that reason modifications are everywhere for them and um, they're very much like hondas in that they're like lego you know you can interchange a lot of parts from them you can buy a wr a wrx and make it into an sti you could buy a base model um, I think it's called a GX, is it? Oh, I can't remember now, but you can buy a base model Impreza, throw STI parts at it all day long, and they just bolt on. You know, if you've got the right parts, they'll just bolt on very much like Hondas were, and, and still are in some instances. That's definitely my fifth pick. Very tunable platform. The newer models, they've, they've definitely got a hold of the reliability issues, especially with the, the earlier, be, being played by head gaskets and hot spots within the cylinder heads. Jay did this, has just recently bought a WRX. I'm pretty sure it's modified because it doesn't feel stock. It certainly doesn't accelerate like a uh, like a stock car. But yeah, that's, that's my fifth pick on this list. Now, if you have any other ideas, any other best first sports cars so to say then please let me know in the comments below if you agree with any of the shout outs that I've made here as far as the, the best five cars then you know please comment below and let me know why or if you disagree let me know why please thumbs up this video subscribe if you haven't done so already and uh, I'll catch you in the next one but I'm just thinking maybe there's another one maybe there's a 350z although the insurance on those particular cars maybe it won't be the next car that you'd get maybe you'd step up to that from maybe the gt86 or brz or mx5 maybe something like that but let me know below what do you think what other cars are there out there these are all japanese cars my preference maybe there's some european ones that would rival these anyway thank you very much for watching i'll catch you in the next one bye for now